Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley. Today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 11, episode two. I know I am super late with this recap, but let me just say, last week just was not my week, all right? And y'all know more than anyone that I hate being late with videos too. So it was killing me inside. Like, oh my gosh, when am I gonna get Jersey up? Like, I need to get it up and out before the next episode. So without further ado, finally here. I'm excited. We have a lot to talk about. I have my mimosa already poured up. So let's just jump right on into it because we don't have a minute to spare. <laughs> so we start the episode off right where we left off, okay? Child, Jackie and Teresa are going at it. Teresa leaves, she's screaming. She keeps calling Jackie a see you next Tuesday. Margaret is like, what in the world just happened? Like, how did it go all the way left? Jackie is visibly distraught and she is on the couch. She calls up her husband and she tells him that Teresa pretty much did not apologize and she's just pissed. So Evan is like, you know what? This is just so low class. He's pissed off as well. She hangs up the phone with him and now Margaret is like, I don't know how we're all going to be able to go on this girl's trip to Lake George now because y'all are at such awful odds with each other. Like, this is just not going to work. Jackie is like, I never want to see Teresa again, and I completely understand. Teresa, while she is entertaining, she's just a horrible person, and we cannot continue to keep overlooking her piss poor behavior just because she brings some storylines to the show. You know what I'm saying? But I digress. So now we see Miss Teresa back at her house. She is pissed. Okay. She's slamming her purse down on um, the island in her kitchen. She calls up Melissa and she's like, hey, do you have a minute right now? Melissa's like, yeah, I mean, it's Antonia's birthday, but um, sure, I can talk for a few minutes. She wishes Antonia happy birthday, and she's like, okay, let's get into it. I hope that you are never friends with Jackie ever again. Melissa's like, why? What happened? Teresa says, she said that Gia was doing lines at college parties. And so Melissa's like, wait, what? Like, I know Jackie did not say that. Like, I know that she did not just come out of her face and say some craziness like that. Then we see Melissa in her confessional say, something tells me that Teresa is at fault for why Jackie said whatever Teresa's claiming that she said. And it's so funny because Teresa thinks that she is smarter than she is. She really thinks that nobody can see what she's trying to pull. Anybody with half a brain could gather that Teresa obviously said or did something in order for somebody to react the way Jackie reacted. And for the last time, that was an analogy. I'm a big believer of when they go low, I'm going to hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I am not one to hold my tongue. And I'm just gonna say, I'm pretty even keeled. You know, I'm not somebody who's just gonna fly off the handle. But as rational as I can be, I let a good amount of stuff roll off my back. But if you catch me on the wrong day, you just might get it. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you guys an example. Case in point, being on YouTube. I'm cool if you disagree with me. I'll even notice a little shady comment here and there and I'll let it slide. And Sometimes I'll spare people and I'll just remove their comment if it's rude, because if I don't remove it, I'ma go back and say something nasty and I'ma get you real good. You know what I'm saying? So I say, let me just 
be the good Christian that I am, delete their comment and spare them. But don't get it twisted. I ain't a punk. You know, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you do catch me on the wrong day, I might just let you have it. And I am in full agreement and full support of what Jackie did to Teresa. You cannot say nasty things about somebody. Then when they respond back, and they blow you out the water, now you're upset and saying that they went too far. That's just not how the game goes. When you keep poking and poking and poking at somebody, you cannot get upset at how they choose to respond. You just can't. People keep saying that, well, that's just not right about Gia. And we saw later on in the episode that when she told Gia what happened, Gia was like, well, mom, you were going after her marriage. So, you know, all's fair and love and war. And Gia was like, you know, I know I don't do coke. So it is what it is. Teresa keeps going on and on about how Jackie is a weak woman, how she's a see you next Tuesday and she just can't stand her. She ends the conversation with Melissa and I was just chuckling like, this season is really about to be a complete shit show because of this one argument. And I'm already getting aggravated just knowing that we're about to hear Teresa bitching and moaning about Jackie clapping back at her. So the next scene, we see Jennifer and one of her daughters. She's going over to her mother's house. Her mother was cooking like a whole bunch of food. And they start talking about her mom and her dad. And the mom just says, you know, as kids, we shielded you guys from what was going on. And so the mom starts crying and talking about how the dad is actually mean to her. And everybody thinks that he's an angel and she's just sobbing. And so Jennifer is just like upset. She's confused because she just wants to know how she can bridge the gap between both of her parents so that they could be on the same page and be lovey-dovey with each other again. Jennifer also mentions that her parents' marriage was an arranged marriage. So she didn't see arguments between them growing up, but she also didn't see love between them either, which is kind of sad. And if I'm not mistaken, didn't Jennifer say that her marriage was arranged to Bill? It does seem like Jennifer and Bill do get along and do love and like each other for the most part, right? I mean, I could grow to love Bill. I mean, he's a plastic surgeon making all that money. I could love him. <laughs> So next we see Dolores and she is on her way to her mom's house. She says that the pandemic has been really hard on her mom because her mom is used to having all of the grandchildren in her house coming in and out and nobody has been able to visit her because of COVID. Her and her mom sit down to talk and the topic of Dolores's relationship with David comes up. And Dolores is like, you know, he's a great man. You know, he isn't abusive. He's not a cheater. He's a good guy. So I don't really have any complaints regarding that because remember her ex-husband was a cheater. So she's like, you know, I've dealt with a lot worse. So Dolores lets her mom know that David was upset with her for not disclosing how she was getting a lipo and a tummy tuck and her butt lifted. And so her mom is like, well, yeah, you know, of course he would be upset. Like, what if something happened to you? Dolores is like, look, he hasn't given me a certain level of commitment. So I don't really feel obligated to disclose all this info. But here's my thing, Dolores. I feel like this is a non-issue because if I had a man who I felt wasn't spending time with me. He wasn't on the track to propose. I would leave. Like if you're not getting your needs met, then I feel like you need to leave. Like don't ever be afraid to leave. Men are like buses. I promise you, if you leave one, another one will be at your doorstep. <laughs> like, that all right i'm not telling you what i heard i'm telling you what i know 
So please, if you are in a relationship and you are not fulfilled, if he is not there, if he is nonchalant about you, if you don't feel like you're being celebrated or adored or desired, you need to pack it up. Shout out to everybody. I had fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shout out to everybody. They I had fun. Good I got to be good. <laughs> 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 nah, I forgot. PM, dot, dot, I'm out. They, they told me to be good. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, don't ever be afraid to leave. And I feel like Dolores has one foot in and one foot out. I feel like David also has one foot in and one foot out. Dolores also lets us know that her parents have an untraditional marriage. They've been married for like, I think she said, what, 50 years or something like that. But they've been married for a really long time. And since her dad is the chief of police, he took the job out, I think in Newark or Trenton, and then the mom lives close to her. So they've been living in separate houses for like 27 years. And you know, they're married, it works for them. She likes it, the dad likes it, and it's all good. Dolores, I hope that everything works out. I hope that you and David get it together. I hope that you and Frank get it together. I honestly feel like they both want each other back, but what do I know, okay? <laughs> so now we see all the ladies packing for Lake George. We see Dolores and Margaret calls Dolores and is like, girl, this happened at my house between Teresa and Jackie. Like I'm nervous as you know what about what's about to go down. Dolores is like, wait, what? Like, this really happened? So she's like, oh my gosh, this trip is about to be a hot, raggedy mess. Then we see Teresa packing for Lake George and she calls up Jennifer. She tells Jennifer what happened. Jennifer is like, oh my gosh, like, what? Like, this is about to be a whole mess. Like, this is just crazy. So next we see Melissa and Jackie. They're on the phone and Jackie's like, girl, this is what went down between me and your sister-in-law. She would not apologize. She would not take back what she said about the cheating rumor. So I had to give her an analogy and hit her where it hurt. So Melissa's like, now you know Teresa has the intelligence of a flea. Of course, she would not be able to process an analogy through her pea brain. So now we see Margaret packing and she says that she considered canceling the trip because she was like, okay, it's about to be a full on war between Teresa and Jackie. She said the only reason why she didn't cancel was the fact that Jackie called and said that she would no longer be going because she just cannot stand to see the sight of Teresa. And I totally get it. I feel like Jackie made the right decision because I would not have gone on that trip either. And if I did go on that trip, I would just go in knowing that everybody's time is about to be ruined because the way that I would be going in on Teresa the entire time, like I would not be letting up. <laughs> and you're gonna always get it again and again and again because these bitches can't motherfucking get off of MC Depp. <laughs> So it also happens to be the day of the trip to Lake George. And Margaret is saying that she hopes that she can talk some sense into Teresa. And it's like, girl, good luck. Teresa doesn't have good sense. She's very self-centered. And she is one of those people who refuses to see when she's wrong. Like we can go back to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh season and see where she was just completely in the wrong and she refuses to own up to her mess. So we see Melissa show up to Margaret's house first. Then we see Jennifer arriving right after. And you know that Melissa and Jennifer are 
at odds. So Melissa just completely ignores her. And then I think her name was Lexi. That is Margaret's creative director. She arrives because she's going on the trip too. So while the ladies are waiting for the rest of the group to get there, Melissa goes on to ask Margaret if Jackie's going to be coming. And so Margaret's like, no, she's not coming. She just can't stand the sight of Teresa. And then Margaret also says, Teresa's just dead wrong in this whole situation. So Dolores finally arrives and Teresa arrives and Teresa is like, oh, is Jackie coming? Like, I really want her to come because I really want to just get into her some more. Like, I just want to like abuse this girl and make her life a living hell. Cause you know that Teresa's just so evil. Oh, Margaret is like, Teresa, it was an analogy. She did not say that Gia was snorting coke. She was saying, what if? She heard that it was an analogy. What don't you understand? Teresa brushes it off like, girl, whatever. Because again, Teresa does not like when you don't tell her what she wants to hear. So everybody's all there. The ladies get into the van and now they are on their way to Lake George. Teresa brings up the whole Jackie situation again. Melissa's like, girl, you should not be spreading rumors about people's marriages, especially when you do not have the receipts and you do not know these things to be a fact. And Melissa is absolutely correct. Teresa was dead wrong. Teresa then goes on to say that Evan is actually her type but she doesn't have a crush on him. So Melissa's like, girl, what? They're all kind of like, girl, like, what are you trying to say? Now y'all got on me in the premiere recap when I said that Teresa was jealous of Jackie and Jackie's marriage. Her saying that Jackie's husband is her physical type, I said, okay, I'm not crazy. And for her to admit that on camera, I said, okay, like I said, I definitely feel like Teresa spreading these rumors that she made up, it was definitely out of some jealousy because she thinks that Evan is fine and she probably wanted a little piece of him too. But I digress. So now Teresa brings up how she's upset that Jackie is not coming on the trip because she would have made Jackie her bitch the entire trip. And I was like, would you girl? Because Jackie's no punk and Jackie has a way with words and she's actually intelligent and she can read down like the way she read you and has you really bothered about that analogy regarding Gia, you seem to be really pressed. So I don't really know if you would have made her your bitch. I think that she would have been sparring with you and been besting you on this trip. So I think that she actually spared you by not going. If I were Jackie, I would have gone on the trip because I wouldn't even let Teresa think that she has me bothered. Like the way that I would be on that trip, just as cool and collected, I would be reading Teresa down. Do you hear me? But then again, I am a believer in protecting your peace and not putting yourself in environments where it's chaos. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, I struggle with it too. Like, don't get it twisted. I'm not always going to take the peaceful route. Sometimes I'm going to choose, you know, verbal violence. <laughs> so now we see in the next scene, Frank and David are out together going to the gun range. And I was kind of like, why are they getting a whole scene? Like, really? So anyhow, they go to the gun range and Frank is kind of off his game. He lets us know that he had fell down a flight of steps, so he's not back at 100%. And he lets us know that while he was recovering, he was recovering in David's house and David was taking care of him. And so he feels completely indebted to David since David really got him through. 
they sit down and start talking about Dolores and Frank brings up, I guess, David's lack of commitment. And he pretty much lets him know that you're a wonderful person. You're a wonderful doctor, but you are a pretty awful boyfriend. Like you get a C minus because you're just not that attentive to Dolores. I mean, it's great to see her ex-husband and her new boyfriend get along and be like the best of friends. But I don't know. I, I just feel like she's in love with both of them. I feel like David is not really that into her. I feel like Frank still wants her back. I feel like she kind of still wants Frank back. Like, I just don't know. This whole thing is just so like weird to me. Maybe I'm kind of immature and I'm not... I don't know. I don't know. Am I the only one who feels weird about the fact that like her boyfriend and ex-husband are like the best of friends? I don't know. I mean, I know what can happen, but it's like, I don't know. The scene was cute. Frank joked about how maybe one day they'll all move into David's house. I was like, I guess. <laughs> So now it is the next scene and we see all the ladies have finally arrived to Margaret's lake house and it's so cute. Melissa rushes to get the best room of the house and you know we were seeing a tour of the home. It's really pretty. There's a really nice fire pit outside. It's directly on the lake. You see some boats out and about. Really really nice and Margaret is such a fabulous hostess. She already had catered food delivered so they're all eating and Teresa has to ruin a really nice lunch by bringing up her problems with Jackie. Everybody's like girl I hate somebody who cannot stop dwelling on an issue that drives me nuts it's like girl we stopped talking about this five hours ago why are you still talking about it like that drives me nuts like Teresa's just so aggravating so anyhow Teresa keeps saying wow Jackie's missing out Jackie's missing out all of the ladies are annoyed Margaret's like Teresa enough and Teresa says well Jackie was laughing about me last year and Margaret is like girl there were pictures like there were pictures of you out with other men in Us Weekly and People and In Touch. Like, this wasn't something that she conjured in her brain and just started spreading around town. Like, this was already, like, in the blogs, in the tabloids, in the news. Like, everybody was seeing this at the same time. So, you're wrong. And Margaret is absolutely correct. Like, Jackie didn't do anything. All she did was say, hey, did y'all see those pictures of Teresa? That's it. And Teresa knows that if the shoe were on the other foot, she would have been doing the same thing. I really could have hit the floor when Teresa said she's a malicious person. I was just kind of like, you really have no self-awareness for you to call somebody a malicious person when you are one of the most vile individuals on this cast. Like, you really just don't get it, do you? Or you're choosing not to get it. So now we cut to the next scene and it is Jackie. She's at home and her kids are like playing outside in the backyard. And so she calls them over to cut their hair. She lets us know that during quarantine, she really has gotten good at cutting the kids hair and she actually enjoys it. So she has her sons come, you know, lined up one by one. She's cutting their hair and they ask her, mommy why didn't you go on the trip with your friends and she says well some of the ladies have been really mean to mommy and that's why she says in her confessional that this whole thing has really just torn her up she is just so disgusted like she can't stop crying and then she also makes mention of how she hopes and prays that the other ladies are standing up for her and defending her on the trip and i have to say i really do feel for jackie like you can tell that this whole rumor has really knocked her off her square. Like, it's really consuming her. Like, she really feels upset about it. And it's easy to say, girl, it's a rumor. Like, don't let what an idiot is saying about you get you down. But, I mean, that's her husband. That's her family. The fact that Teresa has said such an awful thing 
even though she knows that her husband is faithful to her, stuff like that will have you doubt just a little bit. Like even if you didn't doubt, now you have some like, wait a second, but like, is there some truth to this? Like, was he screwing around? Like, is she actually right? So she's just really stressed. And I really hope and pray that we see a resilient and strong Jackie come out swinging the remainder of this season. I really hope that Jackie continues to let Teresa have it. So back at the lake house, we see all the ladies are getting ready to go out for dinner. And Melissa, Margaret, and Margaret's friend slash creative director are all ready and dressed first. So they go out on the balcony and they start talking about how they're really sad that Jackie did not come on the trip. And Melissa says, I have been trying to get Teresa to do the right thing for years. And then we see the flashbacks of when her, Joe, and Teresa were all fighting amongst each other because remember how when Melissa and Joe stepped on the scene, it was hell to pay. Melissa will never be able to get Teresa to see her wrongdoings because Teresa does not like Melissa, okay? Teresa cannot stand Melissa. The odds of Teresa ever seeing things Melissa's way are slim to none. So all the ladies are ready to go. And before they hop in the van to take them to the restaurant, they all decide to take some tequila shots. Teresa lets us know that she is desperate and horny. She wants a man's touch. She wants to be licked up and down and around. She just wants to have a man again. So they arrive at the restaurant and everybody's like, oh, like I just got a text from Jackie. Like she just said, I hope you girls are having fun. And Teresa's like, oh, well, I didn't get a text, like no surprise. So of course, Teresa brings it up again. And she mentions how she spoke to Gia about what Jackie said. And even Gia was like, ma, like you were wrong for her to bring me up, then that means that you really hit below the belt talking about her marriage. Now here's where I have to get on Gia just a little bit because for Gia to tell her mom while they're filming that Jackie wasn't wrong and that she didn't really feel any way about it, now when the show airs, now you want to get on social media and demand that Jackie apologize to you and say that it really hurts you and whatever. Your mother has been wreaking havoc, has been saying some real awful stuff about me for the past three or four years. Girl, I ain't giving nobody an apology. Child, please. I just had to point that out because I said it's just really funny how Gia is now singing a different tune since the show has now aired. But whatever, God bless Jackie for being a better person than I could ever be because I would not be giving anybody an apology, especially not after this woman has been coming after me for years. I don't think so. So then they pivot the conversation to talk about when are they going to find Teresa a man because she needs a man badly. And they bring up sex toys as well. Teresa says that her ex-husband, Joe Giudice, is selling sex toys too now, and he sent her one, and she likes it a lot. So they're laughing and joking about that. Then someone, I think it was what, Dolores or Margaret mentions Melissa and Jennifer getting along, because you guys know that they've been on the out since last reunion. Melissa's like, yeah, girl, I guess. Jennifer lets... Melissa know that she's sorry for making those really nasty comments, calling Melissa self-centered at the reunion. And she just says, Melissa, I don't want to fight with you. I want to start with a clean slate. Here's my thing with Jennifer and Melissa. I believe that Jennifer is jealous of Melissa because the way that she kept calling Melissa self-centered and self-absorbed, I'm like, girl, really? Like, I don't know, I feel like Jennifer's surgery 
kind of resembles Melissa in a way. Like she's kind of making her face look like Melissa. I think that there's a little bit of jealousy and obsession going on in Jennifer's brain about Melissa. Like she really wants to low key be Melissa. And that's why she's on the outs with Melissa because she wants to be her, but she can't. Again, just my opinion, but I feel like I'm usually on the money. I have always sensed some sort of jealousy on Jennifer's end regarding Melissa. They make up and Teresa brings up Jackie again. And they're all like, you have got to be effing kidding me. Margaret is like, girl, Teresa's logic is absolutely insane. Like there is no getting through to her at all. Then we end the episode with a group of guys sending them some tequila shots and they're all excited and they take them. That's where the episode ends. And again, I was thoroughly entertained. This season, like I said in the last recap, this season is about to give us everything that we need, okay? But it's also going to piss a lot of us off in the process. So anyways, thank you all for watching my recap. You already know what to do. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye.